Hi, I'm Brenda E.M. In this video, I'll be showing a graphical user interface design proposal for Linux CNC to see if people would like to undertake it as a programming project. No, I'm sorry, this isn't a functioning interface yet, it's just a proposal. So I'm on a fixed income and I was building a CNC machine. I needed something to run it. So, and I tried Linux CNC and I thought, wait, this, is, this works pretty good and it's sophisticated. And I wanted to do something to help. And so it seems like this is the nature of my help. I looked at the existing GUIs and I, and I thought I would take, borrow or steal some of the best things from each and try to come up with a modular system. This broad brush stroke design stuff is easier to do if you don't have to program it along the way, but when you're doing both, it's really hard. So instead, I devoted a few months on the design alone, and I've had a lot of helpful feedback from the Linux CNC community. Thank you. I looked at the Linux CNC GUI landscape and I found two major interfaces. The first is Axis, which is pretty much a, a, a traditional GUI mouse driven design. It's very adaptable and has easy access to uh, Linux CNC's diagnostics tools as well. There's also a touch interface called GMO Kapai by Norbert. It has some novel sliders, which I think are a great idea, and I use a variation of them throughout this interface of design. It could be said that what I'm trying to do is merge Axis and GMO Kapai, basically standing on the shoulders of Giant. I also drew ideas and inspiration from Kurt Jacobson's Hazy interface, Touchy, and a bit of from um, Piet VR's Craftsman interface. Also, C. Morley, Andy Poe, and Tommy Light gave me some great feedback and suggestions as well. I'm sure I'm going to forget to, to thank someone, so thank you all, anyhow. You may notice that the overall look of the interface, as well as the color scheme, is taken from Blender 3D's excellent design. I chose Blender's look not only because of its appearance, but also because it has an uncomplicated way to show daunting monitor controls. And I feel that when you're running a machine, simple looking is what you want. By design, I added very few new original controls and widgets because I wanted the interface to be easy enough for a beginner to use. It could be said for that for the most part, the, the process of designing this interface is choosing a certain set of compromises with a goal to do most things well enough. Anyhow, let's take a look at the interface. The user interface is designed for a 16 by 9 aspect ratio monitor, and you should have at least a 1920 by 1080 uh, pixel resolution. I've tried my best to keep all the controls touchable with um, a 15 inch monitor, and if obviously you can use a mouse as well. On the top, obviously, there'll be a button bar which controls the interface. Um, also, the colors have special meanings, such as red is danger or safety, blue means you've set something or it's a setting. Green means that something is running or on. Yellow usually means that there's some piece of information that the user interface is trying to give you. And orange means take strong note of something. It's kind of between red and not red. On the lower right hand corner you can see there's an e-stop which will always be showing in places you might notice these little text indicators and um, I use these because they take up less room than a simulated LED with a label or a legend at its side or above. Also depending on your machine specific controls there likely is some room for some um, what I call accessory controls and um, things like mist and flood I consider accessory controls. Some people on the Linux CNC forum um, expressed concern whether or not the um, same interface could support more than one machine, and I think it, they can, but um, not without making the actual parts of the interface interchangeable. These controls here I call the machine-specific controls, and what I was trying to do is using the whole idea of Linux CNC and the hardware extraction layer, I wanted to abstract different parts of the interface so they could be switched in and out. When you switch to a lathe like this, you can see that the machine-specific controls are different, the jog controls are different, and even the readout's different. And you could do the same thing to uh, support a torch. And um, Tommy Light and um, uh, Andy Poe gave me a lot of important feedback because I don't have a torch. And um, so at the same time, I looked at you know three or four, maybe even five different sets of torch controls, trying to come up with some, find some common ground. And I asked them to help me prioritize what's important, what isn't. And so we came up with these torch controls. These things are interchangeable. And um, maybe maybe um, in the future we can come up with laser controls as well. This is the readout area where the interface gives you location information. In a mill configuration, the interface is set to support a maximum of six axes. The three standard axes have larger controls. The buttons on the following axes have italic text and have a different aspect ratio to help 
help them not be mistaken by the user. After an axis is selected, it's shaded. From here, you can perform several actions on it. You can home the axis. You can touch off the axis. You can move the axis to zero after an are you sure prompt. You can type a location to be moved to after answering an are you sure prompt. By the way, the absolute relative and distance to go indicators were added back for safety, so you always know what distance mode you're in when you're looking at the indicators. Other controls in the location menu are a home all button, a probe button, which performs a predefined probe action, a set coordinate system button, which lets you set Set the coordinate system using the current location. And here you can choose that coordinate system with these controls. There's also a button to zero all the axes. I'm thinking this is another button that should have an are you sure prompt. The last control lets you set the location mode. There's also a status area that gives the user feedback. I really wish this was bigger, and the only thing I could figure is perhaps text could be scrolled here if it doesn't fit inside the box. From the button bar on top, let's switch to the run menu, which, as you would expect, is for running G code. The G-code text is shown on, on this old-fashioned green bar to lead the eye to stay on a particular line in the same fashion that the 3D printing software Repertier Host uses. I added a box around the file label in its, in its text box so the user can group these two ideas together. Down at the bottom, we have standard transport controls for starting, stopping, and pausing the G-code with the addition of the ignore comments feature borrowed from the access interface. The pause button is larger than the stop because it's not as destructive. We also have a progress indicator. In the first version of the interface, we can get a rough idea of the progress uh, from looking at what line we're on. This may not be accurate, but I think it'd be better than what we currently have, nothing. By watching this, the user may be able to learn where their machine spends most of the time. Perhaps in a later version, we can actually calculate how much time everything will take. Uh, you know, given if there's enough of processor cycles. Uh, to the right of the progress indicator is another screen enlargement button. Pressing the button will make the code window larger. And as you can see, going back to the main run screen, there's a button near the screen controls that expands the controls like this. And we can also return. Also, from the main menu, we can also click on this button to expand the jog controls. These are the large jog controls, um, and I, which I try to make just as big as those in Touchy. Be because people like myself use their CNC for squaring stock and off-surfacing uh, tasks such as repair work, and, um, and other people might use it for like, you know, truing a cylinder head and stuff like that for a car engine. So I wanted a user to be able to step down a certain distance, whatever their machine can handle, um, while being able to use continuous movement for the rest. I don't think that people should have to um, write a G-code file or open a CAD program just to square a piece of metal. This is the edit menu accompanied with the on-screen keyboard panel. To make it touch friendly, once again, copy, cut, and paste buttons were added as well as page up and page down buttons. Currently, there's no green bar in the editing window because I feel that the user will likely work at a slower pace while editing than watching code go by as it's running. NCAM, or Native Cam, its proper name, is a great utility from Fern V. From the get-go, I wanted something for DRO users on manual mills and people who repair things and people who make one-offs, and Native Cam really fits that requirement. It helps me with those little milling operations I wouldn't want to draw or, or do in CAD. I used it to mill hold down clamps from my machine, and I also used it to mill a camera uh, rig mounting plate round. I, I think it's great that a utility like this is available for Linux CNC. I'm hoping that it will be included in the next Linux CNC distribution. Perhaps the color touches on the icons could be changed a bit, but overall, they're really good icons. This is the MDI interface, and it's also showing the touch screen keyboard. Because I lack experience with Axis's MDI, I followed it pretty closely, right down to the G-code modal indicators. But I needed to make it touch-friendly, so I added the copy and paste buttons. I thought a clear history button would also be handy, and so would a save function, which, which would just write out the MDI history with a day code. The big added feature is six user settable buttons for, for whatever line of code you can think of. This would have to be set in an initialization file, um, so if you find you're typing the same thing in, you might as well just program a button for it, and then you could just push it and it'll be done. LCVet had a good suggestion to move the input line near the keyboard, which I did. Next, we have the tool menu. The excellent tool picture shown here was done by LC Vet, by the way. The people who use Laves posted, and they said they would need to see pictures of their tools, so this is what I'm proposing. Well, 
I didn't want to use dynamic menus to enter tool dimensions because that would keep users from creating their own tools. So there'll be a diagram of each tool type and the user will look at the drawing and fill in blanks from the list. And uh, the final drawings would have, uh, you know, leader lines and so forth to help the user do that. And there'll be a standard set of starter drawings, which can be reused. A four flute milling bit pretty much looks like a four flute milling bit. My thinking is that these tool pictures will be numbered and the lower numbers will be reserved for, um, you know, for, for Linux CNC and the higher ones will, you know, that the user can use for their own pictures and so forth. Once the tool is in the system, the tools could be manually changed by tapping on the big arrows and, and, and tapping select. You'll notice that the tool selection on the right works almost the same way, but it's smaller. Back to the tool menu. The tools are listed by either their number or their position on their automatic changer, depending how you set it in the settings. In the center, we have a time counter for the cutting time on a particular tool, as well as a zero reset to, you know, time on, for that counter. It's little touches like this that require programming time. So I wouldn't respect programmers to have everything going in the first version. This would, would make things easier for people who work with tough materials like stainless steel and tool steel. Below that, we have set up widgets to set up a particular tool, create a copy of it, and raise it or lower it in a priority on the list. The button with the checkbox with the circle around it is to set the default tool. On the tool menu on the right, the default tool icon selects the default tool which you've chosen in the other menu. I'm still working on a probe for my own CNC, but I wanted to include a probe screen. And uh, from what I've seen of the layout and in the videos, Vester's probe GUI and program look pretty good. Other than making it touch friendly and compatible to the interface, there wasn't much to do except for I thought I would add a placeholder for a drawing that shows the probe settings and an indicator for contact and fail so you can tell if it succeeded or not. The settings menu relates to the adjustments that are made to the interface. The first group of buttons affect what is to be done with those settings, whether you save them, discard them, or revert to the original settings. This control lets the user sort out their tools by either the ATC position or their tool table order. The next control lets the user choose between metric and United States customary units, also known as SAE or English. Next, we have increments for feed, spindle, and jog. In the next column, the user can set the increment controls to repeat after a time delay if they want this. Please be careful. You know, you don't want it to get out of hand. A Matissa setting was added to trim down the trailing digits after the decimal point in the display. Some commentators were, you know, worried about TMI. There are controls for the two indicators afforded by some machine-specific controls. Depending on the machine type, the user can swap indicators for special jobs. Suppose you're running an unusually large face mill and worrying about the motor burning out. You can swap out the at-speed indicator, temporarily swapping it for an average indicator. The grid size settings are a carryover from axis. In a later version, perhaps the jog sizes could also match the grid. There. This control lets the user set the file path, and this might help for like when users want to keep each job separate. This control lets the user choose a plugin and whether or not that plugin is active. There are features I wanted to offer the small shop owner and the person working alone in the garage. This is one feature I wanted to offer people who have large shops. If so programmed, the interface can send three six idle, busy, and error. Providing the host computer as a speaker or sound card, when a machine finishes a job, the interface can make a sound or a flash of light, or if there's an error, it could sound a warning or a flash of a different light. These three buttons regulate whether or not the interface sends signals to the help pins or not. For instance, these signals can be used for a pole light to show the machine status as far as red, green, or uh, yellow, or ring an alarm bell if something goes wrong. You'll notice that the idle and busy signals are separate, so additional logic isn't needed to connect the hardware to HAL signals. Next, we have color controls for various parts of the interface. I'm not so arrogant to think that my colors are your colors. People may have vision issues. Also, perhaps using different colors might help adapt the interface for certain operating system uh, configurations. Though, I spent a lot of space adding color widgets to the first GUI version. A Mark II interface might have secondary menus, but this is Mark I. If another setting needs to be here, uh, the color settings would be the first to be bumped off. Firstly, let me say that Linux CNC is very adaptable to different kinds of machines. Also, there's already a good utility to set up Linux CNC hardware called StepConf. It runs separately to the user interfaces, so it works for each. But 
I have four problems. The first is, I don't know if this interface is going to be supported by StepConf. The second is, my RS-485 Modbus spindle is not supported by StepConf. The third is, I want StepConf to continue to be supported for the other user interfaces. The fourth is, I found that the round-robin technique for setting up a machine can be disorienting. So. I propose to include a machine menu with the emphasis on modifying settings and also to suggest additional spindle controls, which the creators of StephConf are welcome to use if they want to include them. Anyway, let's go through the menu. Here we have a control to disable, enable, or configure the machine. When it's not on configure, the settings are locked, and I really think this is important for safety considerations. Also, I feel that the disable function might be handy for various choices on a deactivated machine. Next, we have the same utilities found in the Access GUI. We have controls to handle the machine settings. This button launches StepConf. This control sets the machine type, which affects the machine-specific controls. Perhaps minor variations of an interface can also be added here. And this control lets the user set metric or US customary units. There's a difference. The one on the settings menu is a temporary thing, and this is the natural units for the machine given its screws and so forth, if applicable. Here we have settings to handle three different types of spindle motors. The user can set by pin, pulse width modulation, or serial like RS-485 or Modbus. Below, we have controls to configure or reconfigure an access. Because this isn't meant to replace StepConf, there is, for instance, no screw calculator. Also, we need to describe each machine's access to the interface. On the positive, this allows us to fiddle around with the settings tuning the machine, hopefully without leaving the program, because Linux CNC is so universal that it leaves things that may still need to be configured, but the emphasis is to tune it here, and that tuning can be tested with these controls. A plugin could be chosen from the settings menu and it appear like any of the other tabs. A plugin can occupy three different widths. As far as height of the keyboards used, obviously the area will be smaller. Perhaps it's not my place to say what computer language would be best for the interface, but I hope it will support plugins. Lastly, we come to the help menu, which of course displays help. In the first version, I should think that the help would be rather simple, but hopefully at least give it a list of the keyboard shortcuts. A finder search box would be an extra credit thing. And in closing, this was a really long video, but I wanted people to understand how the user interface should work. There are links to post comments. The Linux CNC forum is also a good venue for your opinion. Thank you to everyone at Linux CNC, and thank you for watching.